Google slavery, Naeem, you on. When you Google slavery, what color people pop up? Black, Black people. You ever see Asians in the field? No. Nope. You ever see Arabs? No. Nope. Nah, this book is the blackest book on the planet, but what happened is they gave you white Jesus, and you never thought, what does Jesus really look like? Verse 16. Uh-huh. Cursed shall not be in the city. Who's cursed in the ghettos in the city of Gary, Indiana? Who is it? Black folks, but God called them what, fam? There you go. Read on. And cursed shall not be in the field. Who was cursed in the cotton fields, in the tobacco fields, in the Caribbean, here in America? Who was it? But what did God call you? What did he say? The children of who? Israel. The children of Israel. There you go. You connected the dots. Is he Puerto Rican or is he black? Huh? Yeah, he's black. Okay. So look at this. He's African. You, these two African Americans, y'all two African Americans. This all of us come from the West Coast of Africa on the same ships. So how the hell are we different people? How you African Americans? He older than you and he black and you are African American Creole. Right. You know what that means? Give me that Isaiah chapter one verse three. That five word, what we teach your brother is who the black people are in Gary, Indiana. Bring it Why are we going through what you see here in Gary, Jeff. Indiana? Let me show you this. Right here on this side, God calls black folk in America. He called them Judah in the Bible. Turn it up. He called them Judah in the Bible. And you said Puerto Rican or Creole, right? So the Puerto Ricans, because Puerto Rican only means rich poor. If you speak a little Spanish, right? It means rich poor. God calls them people Ephraim in the Bible. You, you black too, brother? Your, your nationality, your race? Okay, so God calls you Judah in the Bible. We've been reading the Bible as black folk all our life, not knowing God talking to us. Read that Isaiah 1 and 3. I'm going to show you this. Read Isaiah it. chapter 1, verse 3. Pay attention to the word of God. Read. The ox knows his owner. That's an animal. Go ahead. And the ass is master's crib. The donkey knows where his crib is, where he lives. You know, black people, we said, I'm going to the crib, right? right. A donkey knows where his crib is. An ox knows who he comes from, right? But read on. But Israel, but Israel, the people of God, read, does not know. Uh -huh. My people, our people, what? Not considered. We never considered if we were God's people. Never at all. When they told us you was African American, and Africa and America is two names of two white men. Y'all didn't even know that. Look it up. African American is two names of white men. You said black. What color are the clothes you got on? What color is your skin? How the hell are you black? Right. You see what they told us? They told you you was a rich poor Cree. Creole ain't nothing but a language. You ain't no Puerto Rican Creole, you, that's a language. God said, my people don't consider who they truly are. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, because you said black too, right? Go back to Deuteronomy 28, and I want you to read verse 16 again. Yes, Listen to this. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Uh-huh. Come shalt thou be in the city. Now stop. All y'all from y'all live in Gary, right? All y'all live in Gary, Indiana, right? I ain't from here, but I drove around a little bit, and off top, I know Gary, Indiana is a cursed ass city. <laughs> right? Hell, ain't nobody even walking around on the streets down here. Sun's out, where the people at? Nobody's out here. You go on the back uh, the back streets, the damn builders are ready to cave in. Churches look like they ain't been inhabited in 20 years. Really? And the places where people do live at look like they about to cave in. And if, they, if the buildings look like this and the area look like this, I know damn well there ain't that many jobs around here. What, Freddie? Tell me how's the job market around here. Y'all brothers are a little older. What's the job market like? Most people leave Gary, Indiana, don't they, to go get work. Read that again. Cursed shall that be in the city. This is the things that we got to consider as God's people who are the Israelites. Why are we cursed in the city? Why does it happen to us? Because I, I know a little bit of history in Gary, Indiana. It used to be all right when the white folk were here, right? When the steel mills and stuff was down here, the white folk were here, right? And then the white folk left, and what happened to Gary, Indiana? What happened, brother? Read it again. Read it. Curse 
shall not be in the city. White folk left, and then the curses of God was like, yeah, I'm going to remind y'all ass that you the Israelites. That's right. You're going to consider why this place is like this. Right. Read, Read on. And curse shall not be in the field. Now, here's the question. Who was in the fields? Where, where's the uh, side at? Where's it at? This was at? No, that ain't it. I need the other ones. Where's the other ones at? Who was, what was your name, brother? Bam, who was cursed in the fields historically? I'm going to start with Bam. Bring it out. Huh? Judah? What's their name? What do they call them today? Black people. What you say, bro? Who was cursed in the fields? Was it Chinese people out there with us? Was it Asia or was it our Arab people? Nah, it wasn't but blacks and Hispanics and Native Indians out there with us. That's right. Cursed in the field. Read that again. And cursed shall not be in the field. Now give me Deuteronomy 29 and 1 because I want to connect the dots with you all to show you who God's talking about. Because a lot of times when we read out the Bible, you think it's talking about white people. The Bible is the blackest book on the damn planet. That's right. You know why I say that? Bam, you know why I say that? Because we just read, curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field, right? Tell me, when you Google slavery, Naeem, you won't. When you Google slavery, what color people pop up? Black people. Black. You ever see Asians in the field? No. Nope. You ever see Arabs? No. Nope. Nah. This book is the blackest book on the planet, but what happened is they gave you white Jesus, and you never thought, what does Jesus really look like? Because the pastor said, what do the pastors say in church? What about you, brother? What do the pastors say when you ask them about Jesus' color? What do they say about Jesus' color in the black church? They don't say, hold on, we say that. What do they say in the church? They say white. Huh? They say white. They say white? Bam, what do you say? What do they say about Jesus' color if you ask about it in the church? They say white. They what? White. They, uh, they don't say that. What do they say? They give us, bro. I, just the, I tell you what they say. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And then they'll say his color don't matter. Right. Well, if nobody know what he look like, why the hell you paint him white? Right. That's right. Right. Why? We ain't never thought about those things, right? Amen. Deuteronomy 29 and 1, because yes, I'm going to show you, because it said cursed in the city and cursed in the field, right? Amen. Read that Deuteronomy 29 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 1. I'm going to tell you who God's talking about. Read. These are the words of the covenant, uh -huh. which the Lord commanded Moses uh -huh. to make with the children of Israel. African Americans. Children of Israel. Puerto Ricans. To make with the children of Israel. The Haitians. Children of Israel. So those people that was cursed in the city and cursed in the field, God said those was who? The children of what? The children of who? The children of who? That's why I said you've been reading the Bible your whole life looking for black folk and African American. God been calling you Israel from the jump. Let's go back to verse 16 and read verse 16. Uh-huh. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Who's cursed in the ghettos in the city of Gary, Indiana? Who is it? Black folks. But God called them what, fam? There you go. Read on. And cursed shall thou be in the field. Who was cursed in the cotton fields, in the tobacco fields, in the Caribbean, here in America? Who was it? But what did God call you? What did he say? The children of who? Israel. The children of Israel. There you go. You connected the dots. Remember what I read earlier where it said Isaiah 1 and 3 said, my people don't consider. He said, an ox know where he come from. A donkey know where he lives. We don't think about these things. Who was the people cursing the field? Well, damn, God said it was Israel, but that was my people. That happened. So one plus one equals what? Well, damn, if they cursed the field, that that happened to my people, then I must make me a what? What does that make me? A what? A Israelite. It ain't that hard. But you know what happens? You know what happens? When you go to church, they tell you, don't read the Old Testament. Read the New Testament. Jump back up to verse 15 to show why God cursed us in the city and in the field. I'm just dealing with those right now. Read that verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. Then I got a question. I'm going to go down the line and ask all y'all a question. Read that. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God didn't tell you to listen to religion. This ain't religion up here. This is nationality. This is race. This is history. Right? Read on. To observe. To do all his commandments. All his what? All his commandments. Not to be a Baptist. To do all his commandments. Jehovah Witness. All his commandments. Seven day Adventist. All his commandments. You see how God didn't tell you to have nothing to do with religion? Right. <laughs> 
But where'd you get religion from? Bring it out. You got it from that good old white man right there. He told you to be Baptist. He told you to be John, uh, uh, what's that? Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. He told you to be a seventh day Adventist. Where's that in the Bible? You ain't never read it. God said, obey my commandments. Now here's a question. Bam, I'm starting with you. What's the commandment of God? Give me a commandment. Leviticus 18, 22. I'm going to show you a commandment of God. Because remember, I went over some history that we was cursed in the field, right? Bring it up. That's historical fact. That ain't religion. That ain't made up. You can Google that. And I, I know they don't even teach y'all that in school no more, do they? Can't teach religion in school. But they can't even teach real history about slavery. They teach you that uh, black people migrated to America by choice. They, we, didn't get, we didn't have no damn choice to get put on that ship and ship wherever, dock wherever. They, they taught us that like, our people were... Say it on the mic. Uh, they taught us that our people were like, actually going against each other, uh -huh. like, like selling each other to the white people. Actually. And that's a damn lie. Right. That's a lie. And I, I'll prove it out the Bible. It's a lie. Historically, it's a lie. They tell you that to make you hate each other. Bring it okay. up. Bam. Here's the commandment, right? Leviticus 18, 22. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Now remember, I'm going over this to show why God said, if you don't keep my commandments, I will curse you in the city and you will be cursed in the fields, right? Read that. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Bam, are you into homosexuality? Okay, now look, and I'm gonna get some more commandments cause that ain't just the only one. I'm just starting with that one first. Read that First Corinthians 6 and 9. Now listen to this. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall and is not inherit the kingdom of God. Righteous mean the sinners shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's coming. If you pay attention to the news, if you just Google on the internet, China is getting ready for World War Three. Russia getting ready for World War Three. Israel getting ready for World War Three. The Arabs just uh, 11 days sent as many bombs to destroy Israel off the face of the earth as they can. The whole world is getting ready for World War Three. The kingdom of heaven is coming. The thing is, are we going to be worthy enough to enter it when Christ make his second coming? Read on. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the sinners. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived because this is what happens to us. We say, we find out we know we Israel. You know damn well what I just went over made perfect sense when it said cursed in the city right. and cursed in the field. Right. We will lie to ourselves and say, that ain't talking about me. Right. <laughs> that ain't talking about our people. Right. That's what we do. We lie to ourselves to make ourselves feel comfortable. But God said, I curse you in the city and the field. That happened to us. Right. Do, do not deceive yourself. Read. Neither fornicators. Neither who? Neither fornicators. Fornicators is what? I'm going to start with the grown man. I'm going to work my way down. What's a fornicator? Give me just what you think it is. When you fornicate. Fornicate. Hey. Yeah, fornication. When you love sex. Sex. Unmarried sex. Unmarried sex. Because a man, sex. a husband, and a wife can have all the sex they want to, right? So Christ said, uh, out of the mouth of Paul, if you a fornicator, you out here having unmarried sex? You little boys, you, you got girlfriends and stuff like that. They playing with your stuff. Uh, fornication goes into sodomy and lesbianism too. If you go into those things, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. We got to stop that as a people because you know what happens with it? It may feel good to you. It may feel good to you. But tell me, how many of these kids around here growing up without daddies? Bring it out! A lot, a lot of them. How about y'all? Y'all parents at home? Both y'all parents at home? Yours? Not names, eh? Well, my mom. Did. How about you, bro? You grew up with your with your father in the house? What? Yeah. He's Wait, here and there, son. Nah, he died. Okay, so he passed away. What about you, brother? Nah. No. Mads was here and there. Now, what about you, fam? <laughs> he's, he's. You grew up with both of them. Okay, so we got one, two didn't. Yours passed away, so two out of five, because he said his was three out three out of five of them wasn't there. The statistics say 80% of us grow up without a father in the household. That's the stats. Why? Because we are caught up in fornication doing what feels good to us. Rito. Neither idolaters. Man, where you going? Rito. You can't leave yet. Go ahead. No adulterers. No idolaters or adultery, right? I'll tell you what a, a idolatry is. When you believe in your, in your heart, 
heart and in your mind that if you just say the Lord's Prayer and confess with your mouth that you shall be saved, that's idolatry because that white man right there taught you that. Watch this. I'm going to show you when it comes to that cross. Shit, that's heavy, yo. Goodness gracious. All right. Um, so look, bam, because I know it's happened with, with Hispanics, right? It happened with black folk too. Bring it out. What is that that he's holding up in his hand? What does it look like? Okay. It's a cross, right? This is what I'm going into, idolatry. How do we learn that this right here meant I'm a believer in Jesus? Who taught us that? The Romans, the Spaniards, the English folk. And then once they told you that this means Jesus loves everybody, they then did this. They gave you that right after that. That white man's name is Caesar Borgir, and it's the image of the beast. They gave you that cross, and then they gave you that white image, and we bowed down to it. You might say in your mind that Jesus ain't white. I know he's black, but you know how you bow down to him? What day do uh, black people go to church on? Sunday. Huh? What day? Sunday. What did God say? When should we go to church? The Sabbath. The Sabbath, the Sabbath day, which is what day? What number? The seventh day. If you go to church on Saturday, on Sunday, you believe Jesus' color don't matter, you got a cross around your neck, you are in the midst of idolatry. And it's not just Christianity, it's also that Egyptology stuff. You also want to be into that damn Hinduism. You want to be damn Buddhist. All of that is idolatry because God called black folk in Gary, Indiana, he called them the children of what? Israel. What's that? Israel. The children of Israel. That's what he called you, Bam. And God said the children of Israel, they can't lay down with another man if I made them a man. Them white folk, them Chinese folk, them Asian folk, let they ass do that. But not you. You know why? You know why, Bam? You can't do it? Because you are the son of God. That's right. You're a descendant of the, you're, you're a living physical image of a God on earth. Right. When people see us, they're supposed to say, them's God's children right there. Right. Them's God's daughters right there. But when we are outside of the commandments of God, you know what they call us? Evil. That ain't nothing but a nigga right there. Oh, that's a Puerto Rican. Oh, that's a wetback. Oh, that's a, that's a thot. That's what they call us now, right? Oh, that thing is a pill, right there. Oh, that's one of them, uh, uh, that's one of them busted babies right there. That's what they call you when you're outside of God's commandments. Everything except the sons and daughters of God. Read it from the top again, verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The sinners, go ahead. Be not deceived. Don't lie to yourself and think that God loves you no matter what. White man taught you that. Slavery taught you that. God don't say that. Read on. Neither fornicators. Uh-huh. No. Unmarried sex. Go ahead. No idolaters. You got a cross and all that stuff around your neck. Read. No adulterers. No adulterers. You like sleeping with married women. Right. You like sleeping with married men. You only want a sugar daddy. I, I don't need no man. I want a sugar daddy to pay all my bills. Read on. No effeminate. No what? No effeminate. Now you might not be actually in the act of homosexuality or lesbianism. But you got women tendencies. You got manly tendencies when God made you what he made you. you know? If you are in that way, God said you can't come into the kingdom. And and this is what I, and, and bam, I don't know you from damn uh, uh, yesterday, but I love you enough to preach the word of God to you to change because I know what's coming to this place. I, I know. Go ahead, bam, what are you saying? That's fine. I, I, will, I will dance my way to hell. No, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Because you know why? Because I ain't going to change myself for nobody. You know, you don't change yourself for me. Change yourself for God. Because you said nobody. Change yourself for God. Sister, change yourself for God. Brother, change yourself for God. All of us need to change ourselves for God who created us. Don't change for me. I'm just giving you the words that God uh, put in his holy book for us to read in these last days to warn us from the destruction that's coming. So if you have an effeminate spirit, Read. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's what happens. If you have that effeminate spirit, the next step is to go into actual sodomy. God said you abuse yourself when you do those things. Why? Because, hey, here we go. I'm going down the line. God made a man to be with a woman, right? Do two 
Uh, do two uh, male sockets, do they go together? Yes. Nah, they can't, you can't put them in there. In order, in order for them things to fit, you gotta break the other one. You gotta abuse the other one. It's not made to go together. God said you'll be effeminate, and the next thing you're gonna do is abuse yourself with mankind. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Get you a flyer, man. Make sure you get a flyer. Rito. Hey, Daniel, give him a flyer. No abusers of themselves with mankind. Uh huh. Nor thieves. No who? No thieves. If you're out here stealing, you're a jack boy. You like to rob people. You don't want to work with your own hands. God said you can't come into the kingdom. Why? Because God going to have infinite wealth for all of his children of who? The children of Israel. He can't have no damn beefs around there. You pickpocket something. You walk around, you got something in your pocket, a big ball. Somebody asks, hey, what's that in your pocket? Nothing. You can't come into the kingdom being a thief. Read on. Nor covetous. Nor covetous. Go ahead. Nor drunkards. Nor drunkards. Nor revilers. Nor revilers. Nor extortioners. Uh huh. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28. Why did I go over those things? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and read verse 15 again. You come back up here, brother. Go ahead. Read Deuteronomy it. chapter 28, verse 15. Pay attention, yeah. Bam. What's your name? What's your name? Sierra. Sierra. Okay, Bam. Sierra. Anthony, Bam, Sierra, Anthony, read that Deuteronomy 28, 15 again. But it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, if you don't listen to the voice of God, now the voice of God just told us not to do what? Name a few things, Sierra, we just read. The voice of God told us not to do what? Name one thing, give me one. Be a thief. What about you? Drunkard. A drunkard. Bam, give me one thing that God said we should not do. I should not lay with me. Thou should not lay with man. I'm glad you understand that. God said, obey his voice. And if you don't read, you observe to do all his commandments. Because those things I just gave you were commandments of God. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie with the man. Thou shalt not be a drunkard. Thou shalt not be a fornicator. Those are commandments that God gave us. That ain't religion. Read. And his statue. Well, you got a chance to change, fam. Read. Which I command thee this day. Uh -huh. That all these curses. All these what? All these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now here's a question, Sierra. Was slavery a curse for black folk? Yes, sir. Is that good? Was it good or was it bad? It was bad. We all understand that. Right. And you know what? Because we like to say, I ain't in slavery no more. You show sure in the hell is living the effects of it. That's right. right. You might not be in chains no more, but you're living the effects of it. You know how we know that? Because if the white man say, if he don't say, yeah, we're going to hire you today. You're a good candidate. You will be jobless. If the white man didn't make a factory to make the clothes on your back, you'd be naked. You know how we know that? Where's the black clothes factory in Gary, Indiana? Bring it up! It ain't one. <laughs> it ain't one. Tell me if you want to be, if you want to get a little drink, right? Tell me the black drink that got your name on it. Name one. Hey. Bring it up! It ain't one. You drink the white man's drink. Why? Because we have broken the commandments of God and we are suffering from that effect. Yes, and what happens right. is, what we do is, when we hear the truth, you know what we say? To hell with it. Let me just be me and die however when you can actually change. Right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.